All right. In this video, I want to talk about the harvest that's coming. What we're about to see. I'll try to illustrate it a bit here. Now, right now, we're in the night. And in the church, we have wheat that's growing. And that's what this is supposed to represent. But the tares are also growing among the wheat. Now, this is a pretty thinned out field, right? That's because the light is coming. The night is about to end, and once this light comes, it's going to separate the wheat from the tares, but the first part of the harvest is going to take place. And that's the rapture. You know what? I'll leave a couple of short stems here showing that some people were already raptured. But you see, there's still wheat here, but they never accepted the gospel. They just thought they were Christian. But they really weren't. They were following a church, not Jesus. Right? But then when the rapture happens, that's something that's going to actually wake them up. But then there's going to be a separation going on because there's going to be a lot of chaos. Right? And what this is going to do is it's going to get all of the tares to come together, but also all the wheat to come together. And we'll start noticing the difference because when the seed starts to come up on the wheat, Right here, you think this is the wheat, but this is actually actually a tear. Because the tares, when they start to produce their fruit, they stand up tall. So you see, they, they got the seed starting to sprout from this. But it's kind of like you got two people working at a factory. Or, you know, let's say a, a shipping factory there. And there's a guy who's only carrying like one or two boxes when he's loading. And there's this other guy, he's carrying like three or four, and he's going really fast, and you're like, this other guy's a way better worker. Why is this other guy not doing his much? But you see, the guy who's carrying like one or two boxes, he's actually carrying something that has something in it, right? It has some weight to it. The other guy, he's moving quicker, and he's doing all this stuff because there's nothing actually in his boxes. He's just trying to make it look like he's working, right? Because he's pretending to be a Christian. He's not real. But then you got the wheat here, when it starts to produce its actual seed, it starts to bend over because there's actually some substance here. So you see there's some humility there. They bow God. But then, you know, the terror is revealed, standing up straight, bold, like, yeah, I deserve to be saved. Right? But then again, some of these ones may look straight. They may look like they're bowing. Like, let's uh, take one here where this one looks like it's a little more humble. But then when the fruit comes, its fruit is coming up, standing tall. This one looks pretty straight up, but then the fruit is bowing. All right? So then you start to notice the difference here. I'll do a couple more here just to fill this up a little bit. But the wheat and the tares are going to be revealed and but what you're going to realize is most of the christians are actually tears so i'm going to do a bunch more standing straight up it's a you realize at this point that you're actually a sheep among a whole lot of very hungry wolves and that's the scary thing is that this is a this hunger thing here is actually going to become something that's literal, where they actually literally have to resort to cannibalism because of how crazy the world is getting. But I'm just going to circle the ones that are bowing. Uh, just to show that there. All right, so what ends up happening here is that the tares are going to come together to be burned. So you're going to see these groups of, like, let's say these people here are Calvinists. 
So we'll put a CV for Calvinist because that looks a lot like when you take this big group here, we'll put a C for Catholic, or we'll put like CA for Catholic. You don't want to get that mixed up, even though I believe Calvinism is part of the Catholic Counter Reformation. And then you're going to have, uh, you know, let's say Seventh day Adventists. Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, a lot of the crazy cults that came up from North America. Uh, you'll have over here the Orthodox, right? Over here, we'll just put others like, uh, you know, some of the people that might actually been around the churches that were preaching the gospel. They did, but they never believed. So there's groups like the Baptists. And independent fundamental Baptists and other groups like that that will actually preach the gospel but they never actually truly believed so they are left behind and then we'll put others representing all the other so-called Christians and they are actually all tares and that's why they're left right but these ones that are bowing these are the ones that were honestly deceived they truly didn't reject the gospel. They just didn't ever understand it. Or they never really got it clearly. So God is merciful to them and allows them to go through this. Where now they start producing fruit. And they're going to be the actual main part of the harvest. Because you see all these groups here that are circled. These tares are going to join together. And they're going to claim to be the true Christians. And we're going to get a revived Roman spirit where they believe they are the true Christians and if you're not going to join with them you're causing division and vision is the big evil politically correct word that is damnable if you don't want to be part of it you don't have that freedom you die and all these Christians are going to come together the enemy within is going to be revealed very clearly, and then they're going to go seek to destroy actual wheat, and they're going to be martyred. The true Christians are the ones that are going to be killed, and all these ones that are to come together are going to be these false Christians. The wheat and the tares are going to be separated at, after the rapture. It's going to become clear who's on what side. Like right now, you can't tell a true Christian from a false Christian. Right? Because you don't know who truly believes. Because you're saved by the gospel. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 23 through 25 says, We're born again by the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God, and that word of God is the gospel that is preached unto us. So we're born again by the gospel, which is given to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. And it's what we're saved by unless we believe in vain. And that is that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And when Peter, not Peter, Paul tells us this again in, at the end of Romans chapter 4, verses 22 through 25, we see that when we believe this, we're imputed with God's righteousness. And that's what saves us. is not because we ourselves are righteous, but because God clothes us in his righteousness. You can't see who truly has accepted this that has accepted the fact that they can't save themselves, that they deserve God's damnation. Where they're condemned to death and hell, they accepted this. And they just cry out to God for mercy and grace because they know they can't do it. They can't save themselves. They're crucified with the whole world ready to die because they're condemned. And they, there's nothing they can do to save themselves. And unlike the rest of the world that thinks, hey, they're, they're going to somehow get themselves down from that cross they realize they can't so they accept Jesus' sacrifice I just realized I have two O's there so I wanted to differentiate that and they're born again they're the first fruits so when Jesus gives the sign of his return it'll be when the lightning We'll do a little, all right, that's 
I didn't realize I still had the black on here. Black lightning. We'll just uh, this will be the east, the west. As lightning goes from the east to the west, it raptures the true believers. Then there's a separating of the wheat and the tares. The enemy within is finally revealed, and the the honest ones are going to separate from that, and they're going to be targeted. And very few of them are actually going to survive all the way through. We'll put one back up that's not cut down, but we'll make them a little smaller. Maybe that's why he survives. And his fruit is bowing down. Right? But you see, that's the interesting thing here is that Jesus says when uh, the seed dies, that is when it produces fruit. So when these ones get cut down, their seed drops. And when the seed drops, that's going to reach people. They see the fact that they're willing to die for their faith and that they didn't really do anything evil. All they did is believe something different. They didn't harm anybody. There's no reason to attack them, yet alone kill them. And they see that they did this and they did it willingly, and that's, a lot of them hopefully do it with a smile on their face, knowing that they're going to be rewarded. So that seed drops, and then all of a sudden, let's put next to these ones that die, we'll put a bunch of sprouts here. A bunch of people are going to come from this, from their martyrdom. I see a lot of that coming out of this. But then, you know, you're going to have that mark of the beast where some of these, these tears, they're tears through and through. And they're going to take that mark. We'll put an X on them. Like pretty much all the Catholics are going to take that. No problem. Orthodox too. Uh, but not saying that there won't be any that will refuse such a thing. Uh, but the majority will. And uh, we'll just put a couple more X's around here. But because of the actual martyrdom of these people, we're going to say we'll put some circles in here representing some branches of wheat that I didn't draw in. We'll say that that is actually ones that get converted from seeing the martyrdom and convicted by it. We'll put a couple in here too. So there's some that will not take the mark. But as soon as you take the mark, they've made their choice. They're definitely the pairs. So when they all come together under one Christian banner, which will be some Roman Catholic banner, headed by the Vatican, by the Pope, and maybe some kind of fallen angel disguised as an alien. I know that may sound crazy, but you'll be seeing that, and you'll believe it when you see it. And uh, then they'll have the mark given. So you, they'll all be gathered together, and then they finally make them sealed together to prove who they are. They'll all take the mark. And that would be the gathering together of first the tares. Right? Because they're gathering together to be destroyed. Right? But in the world, even though they're being gathered together, you're going to be seeing the wheat is the ones that are being killed by these tares. Because ultimately, that's what tares end up doing to wheat anyway. Their roots intertwine and wrap around their roots. And they try to choke them out and keep them from producing fruit. And then they try to get in the way uh, between them and the light. Like that's what Roman Catholicism does. It tries to step between you and God. Where you need to go through them to get to God. And that's them trying to step in the way of the light. 
That's what they all do. So let me draw that over here. They're all trying to step between between you and the light. Right? And yeah, I just wanted to do this quick illustration, somewhat quick illustration, to show what's going to be happen pretty happening pretty soon. We're in a field right now, and judgment starts at the house of God, so we got a field of wheat here representing Christians. Of course, there's people who are not Christian in the world, like Muslims and Buddhists and Hindus and atheists and Jews and what have you. But when this happens, the first ones hit will be Christians, where it's actually the true Christians that are harvested, because they are the first fruits. As James said, we're born again, uh, begat by God, by his word, to be a type of first fruits. So those who are born again will be the first fruits and will be taken as that lightning goes from the east to the west, you know, in that twinkling of an eye, in that moment immediately, John is in the spirit. Boom, just like that. And then... There's going to be chaos. Like when Lot left Sodom and Gomorrah, there's going to be destruction. Whether it's God raining down judgment and they make it sound as though it's actually World War III because they don't want you thinking about God's judgment. But even if it is war and it's missiles and what have you, bombs dropping, that is God's judgment. God's judgment on earth is war. And it causes all this destruction. And that's going to get people to be like, hey, we have to... We have to unite because uh, God wants us to be united and we're being judged. So we need to come together and we can't all believe what we want to believe and follow our own conscience. And we can't have that freedom anymore because look what it's caused. And they're going to blame it on that to try to get everybody into this one umbrella where all of these groups just come together. All these groups circled in the black come together, and you see that one religion forming. You already see it starting to form because Catholicism has already helped create the Abrahamic House in Dubai, which is a church that combines Catholicism, Judaism, and Islam, the three main religions of the world, the three I don't want to say largest, because I don't think Judaism is as large as Buddhism and Hinduism, necessarily. Uh, but they're the main players on the field there. And uh, they have them joining together, calling it the Abrahamic House. So that's just a start of where they're going to unite everybody. And, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of restating everything over and over, just... Maybe saying it, saying it a little different. Hopefully you understand and get it. And then these ones, this, these Christians that come together, they're going to kill the true Christians. True Christians that end up remaining, that are converted after the rapture. They're going to repent. So you're going to have a group of people that repent after the rapture and are the true Christians. But then all the false Christians are going to come together claiming they are the true Christians. And they're going to kill everybody else. And they're thinking they're doing God's will. Just like Jesus said in the prophecies, talking to the Jews about the ones that kill you, are going to think they're doing God's will. And they think, well, because you won't join and unite, you're evil. Even though you're not doing anything evil or wrong, all you're doing is not joining them. And that makes you evil. You don't believe what they believe, so you're evil. You're the problem. You have to be terminated. And that's how they're going to justify it. It's not justified, but that's how they're going to see it. Where you all believe what they tell you to believe, or die. And ultimately, they don't even care if you believe it, as long as you just go along with it. Because there's going to be some of these people that are part of the terrors that are just cowards. As we're told at the end of uh, Revelation, that Without of the kingdom are the cowards, the fearful, because there's a lot of these people who don't believe what is going on. They don't believe the one church that's forming. 
they don't want to take the mark of the beast. But since they're cowards, they go and they take that mark, right? Because they're cowards. They're afraid to stand up against Goliath. They're afraid not to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's statue. They love their life. They don't want to be a martyr. They don't want to die. So, they damn their soul. As Jesus says, those who love their life will lose it. Those who will lose their life will save it on to eternal life. And this is talking about the end of the world. So these people who seek to save their life by going along with this church and going along with taking the mark of the beast, right there, because they're cowards. You know, there's a lot of them that are going to just willingly do it. But then, like I said, there's some that are doing it just because they're afraid. Well, then they just damn their soul. But then these ones here that lose their life, they become very fruitful. Even though they die, they end up leading a lot of people to accept the truth by their death. So even though there might look like there's just a few of them at first that repent after the rapture, their death is going to end up actually reaching a lot of people. As we read in Revelation chapter 7, there's 144,000 Jews that are sealed. So you can say they're circled in the yellow here. Right, they're sealed. That's what that yellow will represent. They're sealed by the Spirit. And then it says that there's a great multitude from all the different nations. Right? And that's what these sprouts would be. All those eight that martyrs are happening. As you, the chapter right before it, chapter 6, the fifth seal, there's a bunch of martyrs. Those martyrs are going to bring about a lot of believers. So with all that being said, talk to the people you, you care about that won't accept the gospel. You've tried talking to them about the gospel, trying to get them saved, and they just don't care. Well, then share with them. You can share with them this video. I'll talk to them. Or talk to them about this. What's going to happen? Whether they accept it or not, they fight you on it. Just keep talking about it. So even if they won't accept the gospel, at least they, they got an understanding that, hey, you know what's going to happen. And they're going to wonder when you're gone, how did you know? And that might be what gets them to have some kind of faith. Because what really put my faith into the Bible, when I first started reading it, what I was first drawn to was Daniel. And prophecies. Because I was like, wait, God told us what was going to happen before it happened? I was like, no way. So I went into Daniel and studied Daniel. I ended up studying Daniel with uh, actually the Seventh-day Adventists at first. And to see that he told us all these things before it happened. I was like, that's amazing. And that really made me want to know more. And then started realizing, reading other stuff, I was like, oh, all this stuff isn't a prophecy. But then I started realizing it is prophecy. Such as when God clothed Adam and Eve with lambskin. That was a prophecy of Jesus, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, clothing us with his righteousness to save us from the fallen state. And I was like, whoa, he told us all of this from the very beginning. It's, it's crazy. And uh, that might be what helps a lot of people. Like, wait, 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 wait. How would these people know that this was going to happen? Because you know that's what a lot of these people are doing. They're looking at the Christians saying, well, they keep saying the rapture is going to happen and it's not happening. They keep saying it. They keep saying it. They, you know, they're just a bunch of cultists. Don't know what they're saying. But they're watching because they're like, if this happens. So a lot of times, you know, they'll be like, yeah, whatever. But then sometimes they'll be like, hey, I don't want to be fooled because I, I believed this one time when I was younger. And it didn't happen. And I'm not going to be a fool again. So they're like, oh, but I'll watch. 
nothing happening. So they're like, yeah, whatever. And they might stop watching. But then all of a sudden it happens and they're like, what? What is going on? And there's going to be a lot of people like that. So, I hope this illustrates that very well. Thanks for watching and take care.